The recent deluge in Chennai triggered by cyclone Mai Chong has once again drawn emphasis to the fact that how Indian cities with every year passing is turning more and more vulnerable to the high risks of uh, climate-induced disasters. Therefore, to help us understand the criticality of climate change-induced extreme weather events and how can urban India cope with it, Today, we have with us Jaya Dhindor, Executive Program Director of Sustainable Cities, WRI India, on the Business Standard Morning Show. Hello, Jaya. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure having you on our show. Is the Chennai flood a result of extreme weather events indeed? And are Indian cities prepared for such events? If not, why? Uh, hi, Kasturi, and thank you for having me on your show. Uh, so to start with and answer your question, yes, absolutely, uh, Michong has brought more rain than the 2015 cyclone in Chennai, for example. Parts of Chennai recorded about 53 to 54 centimeters of rainfall over a 48-hour period, right, between December 2nd and 4th. Uh, some stations have much higher numbers, and this is over half of the annual rainfall in Bangalore. Right? just to give you a comparison. Uh, so as per IMD, the warmed up atmosphere is leading to massive rains over shorter durations now. That's what's happening climatically. And are Indian cities prepared for such events? The answer, unfortunately, is no. Uh, and that's not just Indian cities, right? Globally, we are actually not prepared. We are underprepared for this. Uh, and these are there are three reasons for that. For example, one is that the infrastructure capabilities of cities were not designed to handle the kind of events that we are seeing these days. Uh, the second reason is really the sprawling form of urban development, which is largely unplanned, having built up in ecologically sensitive and low-lying zones uh, being you know, a big issue. Uh, Chennai also has a relatively flat terrain, which makes the draining of the water difficult. So while it floods, the water doesn't seep out very easily. Uh, and so you, you see this pattern you know, keeps on repeating itself one city after another. Sometimes it is Mumbai, Bangalore, you know, Delhi, Himachal, and across the country. Like you said, that all these cities, their uh, stormwater drainage, the, their drain sizes are undersized and they're not equipped to handle uh, more than estimated uh, rainfall. Drawing from that, my next question to you is that how much worse do you think that these uh, extreme weather and climate change indu induced uh, weather events can get? And um, how will they be different from the earlier flooding that we've witnessed before in the country? So we now know that extreme weather events will become more frequent and more severe, uh, not just in India, but across the world. And the risks are no more theoretical, right? And you mentioned the IPCC and the kind of statistics that it kind of has talked about. So previously, a lot of the flooding we were seeing, uh, we used to see, you know, and I'm talking about like 30 years ago or, or you know, 20 years ago, was mostly riverine. So it was what is known as fluvial flooding or coastal due to storm surges. Uh, but now what's happening is we are seeing more of pluvial floods or surface water and flash floods, and those have become more extensive, which means that when you build up and there's a lot of gray area, the water has nowhere to go, basically means that unless cities plan for their growth properly, embed resilience measures in infrastructure development, and secure the vulnerable populations, we will just keep seeing recurring scenarios of increased loss and damage to life, productivity, you know, work, property, everything. So extreme weather, we also know, comes with a staggeringly high cost. Uh, and you know, a UN report published earlier this year showed that uh, between 1970 and 2021, some 12,000 reported disasters from weather, climate, and water extreme caused about 4.3 trillion in economic losses, right? And most of them were in developing countries, unfortunately. So this is something that we need to be mindful of. The flooding scenario, yes, has changed uh, over time. And uh, like I said, the frequency and the severity of this is just going to keep uh, developing and getting worse. On the policy uh, side and on the infra side, how, how is that going to be managed? Uh, I think one is that cities need to develop climate action and resilience plans that are central to and coherent with other statutory plans like development plans. The second is we also need to develop SOPs and RFPs for infrastructure development and management that takes into account climate vulnerabilities. The third thing is that we need to have very, very stringent rules and enforcement for protection of ecological assets and sensitive areas in cities. We can no longer afford to build, you know, 
know, wherever land is cheaper, for example, which is on the outskirts and the fringes of the city and where the ecological assets often reside. The fourth thing is that, you know, we need to create plans for upgradation of infrastructures carrying capacities. Uh, like I said, you know, some of that was not anticipated and therefore your infrastructure is, you know, 40 years, 50 years, 100 year old in some cases like Kolkata. And then finally, we need to figure out and prioritize financing for such infrastructure, right? Like how do we fund this infrastructure? Where does the money come from? How do we kind of as a city, uh, you know, come collectively towards, you know, building and financing this kind of infrastructure is something that cities need to do on a priority basis. I read somewhere that Indian, uh, the urban planners, they're not that, they don't pay attention to the land use patterns and how to uh, incorporate land use analysis and assessment into their own urban planning. But there's more attention uh, on accommodating the rampant urban sprawl. So uh, what do you have to say about that, ma'am? Is that true? See, um, I'm an urban planner by training, so I can I can talk about this a little bit. Uh, when I went through sort of training, right, in urban planning, this was over 20 years ago, climate change, climate disasters were not a conversation even at that time, right? So when we were doing all of this, uh, these are things that we have come to learn, know about as, you know, cities are facing these problems, right? So the traditional models of urban planning definitely look at sort of land use patterns and accommodating, you know, like building compact cities and all of that. Mind you, these are also very important mitigation efforts, right? But the important thing now, the central tenet of, you know, urban planning is definitely going to be around climate resilience and how do we adequately incorporate it. And that is why, like I said earlier, we need to understand how to bring coherence between all of our development plans, all of our statutory plans that apply to a city, that apply to a region or a district, and ensure that climate resilience is at the heart of it. So that was it. Uh, thank you so much, Jaya. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for joining us on the Business Standard Morning Show. Thank you very much, Kasturi. It was a pleasure being here. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. He's making plans for an early retirement. Business Standard.